This is the 2024 Toyota Highlander Platinum. This Highlander can do a little bit of everything. With all-wheel drive and a 5,000-pound towing capacity, it could be a bruiser. The 24 miles of gas to the gallon and Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 technology help you save a buck at the pump and keep you safe on the road. And the heated front row and second row leather seating, JBL audio system, and a panoramic sunroof are some of the great features that check the box of driving in style. With its off-road toughness, a bunch of sleek features, and a five-star safety rating, there aren't many vehicles that can boast the same as the 2024 Highlander Platinum. Today, we're taking Steven Leonard for a drive. Wait, that's his brother Sean, though. What's going on here? Hey, how's it going? Oh, it... Mitch, Sean. what's going on? What's up, man? I, what's up, I thought it was Steven today. What do you mean? You said you needed Lenny for driving with the dogs. I... I think I had Steven signed up for driving with the dogs today. I didn't think it was was you today. It said Lenny driving with the dogs. I could see where the mix-up could be here, but I, I I think I need Steven for this episode. So he's been here a couple months, third year. I don't get driving with the dogs once. <laughs> well, well, I think your time's going to come, but so I think... I, so I just drove back to the ring for no reason, is what you're saying? Uh, it, it does look like that. All right, no problem, Mitch. All right. Um, I'm really sorry. No, no problem. All right. Could you, yeah, yeah, could you go see if Steven's bumping okay. around in I'll there? I'll see if Steve's in there. Steve, Steve, Steve. No problem. All right. I'll Sean, go I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, man. <laughs> like we were saying, Steven is in his first season with the dogs, and the Rockaway Park, New York native has one goal and three assists while splitting time between forward and defenseman this season. Steven, how we doing, What's sir? Mitch, how are you? I'm Mitch Stewart, and this is Driving with the Dogs. Good, Good to, to see, see you, man. I think I uh, maybe ruffled some feathers with Sean there. He, oh, what happened there? It seems like he was thinking it was his turn for Driving with the Dogs, and uh, yeah, a little, little brother mix-up hey, happening. He's got to get in line. All the brothers <laughs> first every day. So It's been great having you here this season. I, I That's kind of where I want to start. You obviously had played two previous seasons in the SPHL you're with Knoxville, you're with Pensacola, you've had some other stops along the way that we'll get to, but I just want to kind of come back to maybe what led to you coming to Roanoke this season, and what was that process like as far as you talking with head coach Jan Bremner to make it happen? Yeah, I know uh, we talked over the years and with the potential of me becoming a dog, and unfortunately it didn't work out last year, but um, at the end of the year, uh, wasn't protected by Pensy, and Kind of had a few options around the league and, and kind of talking with Sean and, and Brems over the summer. We, we figured it'd probably be something we'd be looking at add and becoming uh, a dog. And um, I think so far it's been a pretty good fit and I've, I've enjoyed my time here. The fans are awesome. The, the guys are great. The organization treats us phenomenal. So I've really enjoyed it so far. I think everyone that knows you knows you're a very physical player, you know, hard on your sleeve type of player. And I think that that's probably put you in some interesting situations you know with some of these guys that are now your teammates here in Roanoke was that ever kind of something that comes up at the beginning when, when you get to the locker room or is it kind of something where it's like hey you know you, you're with us now like that that's all old news yeah uh, these guys a lot of guys here I've actually battled against I think for for three seasons if you go back to our time in the Fed during COVID year so yeah it's been a, a lot of battles against these guys but I've kind of been in situations before where you're actually battling with guys and you walk into the dressing room and you kind of just shake hands and laugh it off. And I think it kind of gives you a newfound respect for them because, you know, as competitors, we, we compete against each other. And, and, you know, the guys that go right back at you, you earn, you know, you, you respect each other for the battles. And the guys that have been here are just unbelievable guys. And I knew that coming in. You know, Sean's always talked to me how much he loves the dogs and knowing different teammates around the league. Like, everyone knows this is a great spot to be in. And that's a testament to the, the returning guys that have been here some three, four, or five years just leading the ship. You were definitely well-known and, and respected before you even stepped into that locker room. And hearing this summer that, that you were going to join your brother here, play for the Dogs, you guys obviously grew up playing together in, in Rockaway Park, New York. And then you played together in college at UMass Dartmouth. Yep. You, you played together with... Elmira and the FPHL, as you were mentioning, and you guys even had a your first ECHL call-ups together with the Norfolk Admirals. Green light. <laughs> <laughs> Good call. Last year, Sean was here for a bit, then he was with Jacksonville. You were with the Iowa Heartlanders in the ECHL, as well as with Pensacola, and, and even Danbury for a time at the beginning of the year. 
Was that something that was important for you guys this year when you were trying to figure out your plans for, for this upcoming season that you guys wanted to stick together and play together again? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, we, we've kind of played at every level together and some spots uh, you're on your own, which I think is good for our own growth and development. But uh, coming into this year, you know, like you said, I was on three teams and three leagues in three cities and you have a ton of teammates and I've met a ton of great guys over the years too. But um, it's obviously special you have the opportunity to, to share the ice and a jersey with your twin brother. Obviously, he's been a teammate of mine since uh, we're in the womb. So it's always nice when you get to play the game we both love together for the same city and organizations. You bring, you bring that veteran experience in this season that not a lot of new coming players have from year to year in a locker room. What are kind of some of the lessons that you feel like you've learned in your career that maybe if you're sitting next to a rookie in the stall in your locker room that you're kind of trying to pass along? What are you kind of trying to bring to the locker room as far as your leadership? I think just showing up prepared every day. You know, it could be a long season and we're blessed to wake up and, and this be our job, but it's, uh, it's a lot on the body, physically, mentally. You're always practicing, uh, road trips and stuff. So I think taking it day by day and trying to stay in the moment and, and just be a good teammate. You know, treat new guys right, treat younger guys right. And remember what it's like to be a rookie or be a new guy in a locker room and you think back to those teammates who go out of their way to have you over for dinner or, or go out to lunch or just a little small talk on the ice, working with drills. So I think that stuff goes a long way for – for new guys coming into the league and then as for what I try and bring you just I've played with some tremendous teammates who, who really take the time to be really good professionals so you try and just you know even as you get older you try and learn from from every guy in the room what are your plans for maybe after your playing career I know you're enjoying your hockey right now you're obviously here with the rail yard dogs putting in your best effort every day but what does that kind of look like for you? What are your plans for the future, maybe? So one of one of my goals, uh, obviously, was to become a professional hockey player, but uh, unfortunately, can't live this life forever. So a dream job of mine back home in the city was to be part of uh, the fire department in New York. So I took the test my freshman year in college, and with COVID, everything got pushed back. So right now, they're kind of reaching my list number, so I had to go home a couple of times already to, to handle some medical stuff and some other background checks. So... Um, We'll see. I, th I think more than likely I'll, I'll be in the academy this spring or the fall if everything goes to plan and I get all my stuff in properly. But that's kind of looks like what the future holds for me is is going down that road and, and joining the fire department. About a quarter of the way through the season, and I think that when you watch the games, Roanoke's played pretty well in a lot of them, but I know that too that the standard in that locker room feels like maybe everyone's not really satisfied with, with how the first quarter of the season has gone. Only seven wins in the first 14. How do you kind of feel, uh, how does the room feel as far as where you guys have been at to this point and, you know, your ability to maybe kind of continue progressing, continue getting better to try and reach that ceiling later on as the season progresses? Yeah, I, I think kind of what you touch on, the standard and expectation day to day and, and the goals we have as a group. And at the end of the day, you want to you wanna raise a championship. And I, I think right now, I don't think uh, we've had spurts of some really good hockey and stuff. And we've definitely caught the injury bug a little early on, so we're missing a few good pieces. But that's not really an excuse because everyone deals with that at these levels. So I think right now we're not we're definitely not satisfied with our game. And I think going into this weekend, I think we'll, we'll be playing a little bit more of a pissed off brand of hockey because at the end of the day, you want to win games. And what we've done so far has been inconsistent and we want to become consistently one of the hardest teams to play against in the league. Is there anything maybe I didn't get to mention or touch on that, that you'd like to bring up? Anything as far as for people that are listening to this today that you want them to know? Yeah, I just hope, uh, you know, with being on the same team as Sean this year, I think when we get to family weekend later in the year, I hope it could just be a more pleasant experience for, for everyone involved. And, <laughs> You know, maybe the fans could enjoy us wearing the same jersey instead of them all hating me leaving the rink. But well, I think at this point, Stephen, as long as you're willing to let the bygones be bygones, I think that everyone is is already starting to love your play and, and love your role here at the Rail Yard Dogs. So again, I, I appreciate your time today, man. Yeah, thank you so much. And me, here's here's to many more W's and yeah. both the Leonard brothers putting it to them. Absolutely, go dogs. <laughs> Driving with the Dogs is sponsored by Haley Toyota, the official ride of your rail yard dogs. Visit Haley Toyota online at HaleyHasItForLess.com 
and stay tuned for more episodes coming soon.